Hello and welcome to another edition of Stockwatch. So we see over the last few hours that Apple have been declared back on top of the smartphone war against its competitors. You know, the launch of the 5G variant recently has propelled Apple to the top of the global smartphone makers ranking. And this has come for the first time in five years, which is quite astonishing, seeing as though that, you know, when you look at Apple smartphones, you think that they're the dominant force in the industry, but that hasn't been the case for the last five years. So Apple has sold over 80 million phones in the final three months of 2020. So that was in Q4 uh, following the launch of the iPhone 12. And that's overtaking the competitors of Samsung to become the world's largest smartphone maker. As I said, that's the first time in five years so since 2016, which is quite significant. And a lot of speculators are saying that this momentum will carry on into the first quarter of 2021 at least. And that coincides with the Chinese New Year as well. So quite a big holiday there for growth to continue. Uh, and this is in line with the recovery market as well in 2021. So the new iPhone helped set off a broader slump in smartphone sales in 2020. And that was a decline of 12 percent. And uh, that was, a, you know, it, it's obviously quite a big detrimental fall when the pandemic really hit because it was consumer confidence that was dented as well, not just sales in smartphones. But, you know, <coughs> excuse me, recent reports as well are saying that a lot of Apple MacBooks have been infected with a malware virus and this is called silver sparrow and it includes a self-destructing mechanism as well but you know 30,000 macbooks it's not really too detrimental at the moment but you know it's uh, it could be a bit of a hindrance as they look to get to a three trillion dollar valuation by the end of this year so we'll have to wait and see if that's going to kind of affect anything because it's been 153 countries now that reports have been um, stated for this uh, silver sparrow malware infection. So as I said, we'll have to wait and see if this becomes apparent or if it becomes just another slight infection into the hardware of the company. Uh, just touching as well on another tech company, Cisco has completed the acquisition of IMI Mobile PLC for $730 million as they look to build on previous investments. So they've done a few investments and a few acquisitions in the past. And we'll have to see if this is a step in the right direction for the company as well. So just a quick look on Apple, first of all. So the last time I looked on Apple, I was looking at this recent peak that we saw at the, well, going into uh, Q4. This was in September. So this was as we were just in exiting Q3, going into Q4. And as you can see, we've had a bit of resistance on this. We had this, the, the very positive ascending channel uh, for most of, 20, well, the back end of 2020. And then we saw some, you know, momentum start waning. And now I'm looking at this as quite a big resistance um, in the well, in the cycle of Apple trying to maintain record highs again. Not much in the way of momentum here. Be looking on some RSIs as well to see if it's been overbought or oversold as well. Uh, I'm using the Ichimoku Cloud like I usually do to, just to give me a bit more of a glimpse at what we can expect. So prices are touching the top border of the Ichimoku cloud, which indicates either, you know, a bit of an engulfment here, but prices are starting to see the light of day out of this engulfment. So I'll just put a bit of a support here. I'm looking to see if prices are going to start pushing higher. If they do, then this will be my first target, roughly about the $137 range and pushing higher and trying to get back in this ascending channel. But they're a bit of a long way to go on the terms of that. So yeah, just looking at the long term resistance at $137. And if we can eclipse this Ichimoku cloud in the near term as well. So just have a quick look on Cisco as well. The last time I looked on Cisco, you know, we had this very great ascension from uh, the big dips that we saw at the back end of 2020 and the rise in the stock price as well. This was due to mainly a lot of acquisitions. Obviously, this recent acquisition, it's gone through. Uh, we're just waiting for prices to start picking up again if they do as well. Again, just looking on momentum as well to see if we're going to see any signs of exhaustion. Here is a, quite a very big bearish divergence. It's quite a long term one, obviously, you know, lower lows here and higher highs on the price as well. So just looking to see if there's going to be any form of upside going into 
Q1. Again, I'll be looking at the top board of this Ichimoku cloud. If prices start going further downwards, if we get an engulfment, then I expect prices to start leaving, leading um, even to lower lows, yearly lows now as it is uh, coming up to March. And if we see a bounce at this price, then obviously I'll be looking at recent highs as well to put some buy stops in there as well. So that's all from the stock watch today. Just a few things to look out for as we start the beginning of the trading week. And if you have any comments or queries, as usual, please feel free to add them to the post and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Have a great trading day ahead and bye for now. Yeah.